Okay, my wonderful friends. It's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. And today we're going to do a little dragon head study. And I got to tell you, we need a new science. Because everything that we were told is, is at least up in the air right now. I think we should call it Geobiohistomythology. <laughs> Anyway, what it is, is that the geology is not correct, because this is not just rocks. And that's what they see, these things. Oh, it's just an absolute uh, geological upheaval, plate tectonic, lava flow, obviously. All I have found is biology. And I have found the mud fossils, which it changes everything. It changes geology, it changes biology, because they don't understand how these things converted into solid creatures. And it's a nucleophilic substitution, which your body is doing right now, otherwise you would die. Every molecule in your body is unstable and continuously being refreshed, and that's called nucleophilic invasion. Substitution. They bring in new stuff, they take the old stuff out. Now, and that's what happened in these floodwaters, and they were hot floodwaters, and this was recorded by Velikowski. There's not a single culture on the face of this planet that doesn't talk about dragons, monsters, giants. All right? Why, why would they all do that? And especially with the evidence. Now, I think this, this was sent to me today uh, by a friend, and I think this is in um, Thailand. And we're going to just take a quick look at a few things. I, because you could do this all by yourself. Go to Nak, I think it's Naka Cave in Thailand. And they have all kinds of snake things. And it was like a viper pit, it looks like to me, with dragons and all kinds of things. I think that's where that came from. I mean, I got so much on dragons. Look at this one. They all look, they all have similar characteristics. Let's just go with that. And every culture had them. So I don't care what you say. They had to be around somewhere. Look at this. Isn't that something? Isn't that gorgeous? Somebody put a lot of work into these things. It's just somebody's art, art you know, it's pretty much real. <laughs> Look at this, they're trying to kill a dragon. Now, where that picture came from, je ne sais quoi, je ne sais pas. Dragon Regulus and Bagrados Dragon, whatever that is. Whatever's going on here, I am not sure, my friends. Looks like an oriental type thing. I have it down as dragon rider silk. There's a dragon river. And I think that was a dragon. It died there and sunk into the landscape. Yeah. You think that's no normal landscape? This is the average, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, well, tectonic uplift, uh, residual magnetism, specific gravity, yada, yada, yada. If you have a PhD, you'd understand it. Dragon scales. This guy's got a ichthyosaurus. You see there? This is the same damn looking thing. That's a parasite. That's <laughs> a freaking parasite. Dragon's eye. All right, this I think is a dragon's eye. You see all these little layers here? At first I thought it was a tendon ball, but they normally don't have that many layers. I think that is a dragon's eye. It's a mine in the United Kingdom, or UK, whatever. I guess it's United Kingdom. There's a bigger shot of the eye itself. And see how it's pinched on the edge here? It's coming down and pinched. I think it is an eye. Good size eye. 
And what is this? This is uh, something written by Herodotus. Yeah, Herodotus. There is also another sacred bird called the phoenix, which I did not myself see except in painting. For in truth he comes to them very rarely, at intervals, as the people of Heliopolis say, of five hundred years, and these say that he comes regularly when his father dies. And if he be like painting, he is of this size in nature, that is to say, some of his feathers are of gold color and others red, and in outline and size he is as nearly as possible like an eagle. Well, that's not big. This bird, they say, but I cannot believe the story, contrives as follows. Setting forth from Arabia, he conveys his father, they say, to the Temple of the Sun, which is Heliopolis, plastered up, plastered up in myth, and buries him in the Temple of the Sun, and he conveys him thus, forms first an egg of myth, as large as he is able to carry, and then he makes trial of carrying it, and when he has made trial sufficiently, then he hollows out the egg, places his father within it, plasters over with other myrrh that part of the egg where he hollowed it. He hollowed it out to put his father in, and when his father is laid in it, it proves, they say, to be of the same weight as it was, and after he has plastered it up, he conveys the whole to Egypt to the temple of the sun. Thus they say that this bird does. Interesting. Boy, I'll tell you, I haven't read this in a long time, a lot of these. This is Herodotus again. He was a very, very important writer long ago, one of the earliest writers. Now, this is Winged Serpents of Egypt, Book 2.75. There are also about Thebes sacred serpents, not at all harmful to men, which are small in size and have two horns growing from the top of the head. These they bury when they die in the temple of Zeus, for to this god they say they are sacred. So Zeus had the dragons were sacred to him, or they were sacred to Zeus, or Zeus was sacred to them, whatever. There is a region, moreover, in Arabia, situated nearly over against the city of Buto, to which place I came to inquire about the winged serpents. And when I came thither, I saw bones of serpents and spines in quantity so great, it is impossible to make report of the number. And there were heaps of spines, some heaps large and others heaps less large others smaller still, and then these, and then these heaps were many in number. The region in which the spines are scattered upon the ground is of the nature of an entrance from a narrow mountain pass to a great plain, which plain adjoins the plain of Egypt. Now, so they were in a pass, a narrow mountain pass, so they would have been swept into that pass, piled up there, and all died, and their skeletons were there. Now, at that point, all right, because Herodotus, uh, I can't remember what he was. I, I got to read. I think it was 400, 600. I can't remember. He was in the BC era. I have to look that up. But this is really important. This region in the, where the spines are scattered upon the ground is of nature of an entrance from a narrow mountain pass to a great plain where all the stuff swept out. Absolutely perfect. Which plain adjoins the plain of Egypt? And the story goes that at the beginning of spring, of spring winged serpents from Asia fly towards Egypt. And the birds called ibises, ibises, meet them at the entrance to this country and do not suffer the serpents to go by, but kill them. On account of this deed, it is said that the ibis has come to be greatly honored by the Egyptians. So the ibises were killing these serpents. So they became very honored by the Egyptians, and the Egyptians also agree that it is, it is for this reason that they honor these birds. Now, let's see what this says. The outcome, outward form of the ibis is this. 
It is a deep black all over, has legs like those of a crane, and a very curved beak, and in size it is about equal to a rail. This is the appearance of the black kind which, flight with the serpent, which fight with the serpents. But of those which most crowd round men's feet, for there are two several kinds of ibises. The head is bare, and also the whole of the throat. And it is white in feathering, white in feathering, except the head and neck and the extremities of the wings and the rump in all these parts of which I have spoken, it is a deep black. While in the legs and in the form of the head, it resembles the other. As for the serpent, its form is like that of the water snake. And it has wings, not feathered, but most nearly resembling the wings of the bat. That's the kind of thing I just showed you. It looks like a snake and has the wings of a bat. Let so much suffice as has been said now concerning sacred animals. Yikes. Yeah, here it is right here. Herodotus, the father of history. He goes back to 484 BC. So he's almost like 500 BC in the realm where they were still talking about the history in a realistic way. And then the enlightenment of the age came, just like it for us came, and they wiped all it out and talked about evolution from slime. Well, that's not how it happened. Oh my God, I forgot all of this stuff. Here's Herodotus again. Just so also, if vipers and the winged serpents of the Arabians were, of the Arabians were produced in the ordinary course of their nature, man would not be able to live upon the earth. Now listen to this. This is this is unbelievable. But as it is, when they couple with one another, the male is in the act of generation, as he lets go from him his seed. The female seizes hold of his neck, and fastening onto it does not relax her hold till she has eaten through it. The male then dies in the manner which I have said. The female pays the penalty of retribution for the male, killing the male, in this manner. The young, while still in the womb, not born yet, take vengeance for their father by eating through their mother's womb, oh my God, and having eaten through her belly, they thus make their way out for themselves. Other serpents, however, which are not hurtful to man, produce eggs and hatch from them a very large number of offspring. Now vipers are distributed over all the earth, but the others which are winged are found in great numbers together in Arabia and in no other land. Therefore it is that it is it is that they appear to be numerous. Holy smokes. All right, this is, this goes back about ten years. This is just blowing my mind. Here's another one, Herodotus. No, you've heard of frankincense, frankincense and myrrh and all this stuff, so very, very expensive. You know, why? Why? Well, guess what? Listen to this. Again, Arabia is the furthest of inhabited lands in the direction of the midday. And in, the, and in it alone, of all lands, grows the frankincense and myrrh. That's the ones that are so expensive. And cassia, and cinnamon, and gum mastich. All these except mirror are got with difficulty by the Arabians. Very hard to get it. Why? Frankincense they collect by burning storax. Where do you hear this? It's brought to them by the Hellenes and by the Phoenicians by burning this, this storax, I say, so as to produce smoke they take it for sh for these trees which produce Frankenstein are guarded by winged serpents. The trees where the Frankenstein and myrrh are. 
the winged serpents, small in size and of various colors, which watch in great numbers about each tree, of the same kind as these which attempt to invade Egypt. They cannot be driven away from the trees by any other thing but only the smoke of storax. Holy shit. And this is brought to them by the Hellenes and the Phoenicians so then they can burn it to get the frankincense and myrrh. What are they, what are they doing with the frankincense and myrrh? What's so good about that? I, I, I'm telling you, this is... I have forgotten all this. Okay, as you just saw, there these things were real. Now, I've got a ton of pictures and actual dragon's heads and all kinds of things that I'm going to be showing you. Now, and there are going to be some real ones, there's going to be some fake ones, there's going to be pictures, there's going to be, I don't even know what. But this is where we're starting. All cultures talked about dragons, and they all pretty much represented the same thing. They had this big, they all had seemed to have a beard, and they had this big bumpy nose, and then the flares off of their head, and flary eyes, and this big long body, snaky looking thing. And, um, and they all pretty much, pretty close to looking the same. All right, that's just something, uh, iguana. I'm just going to go, oh, okay, now this one here, this is the one that's in Morocco. Hold on. All right, this is the dragon that's in the desert. This is in Morocco, and it was attacking a fish. Now, take your time. I'm going to wipe all this off in a second. There's his red flared eye, and it flashes back. And this was written about in Apollodorus. If you look up the Library of Apollodorus 1.6, it'll talk about Typhon. This is Typhon. Now, there's the bump of the dragon's nose, and he, this is his throat. Runs all the way down here. That's the throat, you see it? They all have that flashy-looking stuff. Well, not all, but I see a lot of them with that flashy-looking stuff on the side going down on the parades and that. You see those. Now, this is all flashy, flary, scaly, feathery looking stuff. Out of his mouth is pouring all this. You see all this stuff here? That is venom attacking another giant creature down below. And they both apparently died at the same time. This green I'm showing as his beard. The beard comes down here. And that appears to be the source of the toxin. And the toxin appears to come out of this yellow vein it runs down and that's where the toxin and it squirts right down through I'll show you this carefully in a second now and of course his mouth comes down here but this is all just squirting down below now I'm gonna wipe it off now keep watching as I do let's take there's his red eye it's flashing back here this is his head all right there's his nose comes up around his little nostrils or whatever that's up over the top of his head, all of this scaly, flashy stuff. Remember I talked about the little fluty looking things? There's his back, same sort of flashy, scaly looking stuff. Now, this is his beards. See the two beards? One here and one here. And I'm going to come up close and show you. That's what's squirting all this stuff out. Nasty, nasty stuff. And it's just spewing out all over. Now, this is his throat, of course, all the way down here. And these are the dragon scales. Now, let's come in and look at that very closely. Let's just start with his beards. You see those two beards? Those are beards. Now, I see the one right there? That's the one that's really got the nasty stuff. Let me see something. This thing, ooh, this thing keeps getting out of focus, and I think it has something to do with the lighting. But anyway, those are, that's his head, and the two beards, and this is all this really nasty, nasty stuff. And it's coming down to another giant creature below. But first of all, let's look at his dragon scales. Alright, these are the dragon scales. Or I don't know, something's going wrong. Okay, so here we are at the dragon. 
it's very, very obvious if you take the time, and you have Google Earth, I'm sure, so you can certainly take the time yourself. Now let's look at his dragon scaled throat. You see that? That is the dragon's throat, oh, and it runs very, very, very long way. Now, these are the scales. You see those scales that run down his throat? All right, take your time and look. You see him running all the way down his throat. Scale, 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 scale. Now, let's keep moving down the throat. All right, you ready? Down the throat, down the throat, down the throat. Scales oh, everywhere. Scales everywhere. You can see them. I don't have to point them out to you. Scales everywhere. Scales everywhere. And then what's this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we got going on here? Let's back out and see. All right, what do we see there? It's a gash. His throat was cut with a great and mighty sword. That's what it says in the ancient text. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going with them. Now this is all the effluent running off from the dead decaying dragon, but it's on top of the surface. So this didn't happen a millions and zillions of years ago and everything piled on top of it. Same thing down here. The creature runs all the way from here to the other end of Africa. This is like 1,100 miles long or, so, or more than that. I, I, I'm, it's somewhere which is unbelievably long. And I mean, it's, it blows everybody's mind when the first time they see it. And once they start seeing the dragons everywhere, as I'm going to be showing you, they're everywhere around the earth. Everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I mean, this one here is huge, and it was attacking this gigantic fish. Now, I'm not going to fool around here anymore showing this over and over, but this is the eye, this, I don't know what that is. This is the eye, this is the, fin, you know, the scales, this is the fin, this is the tail, All right, and this up here is where he was being attacked by the, uh, the um, dragon. All right, he's being attacked by that dragon. You see all that stuff spitting down on his fin? This is what that stuff looks like. You see that? That's what's coming down on that, that fish's fin. Look at that. This is some really nasty, nasty stuff. And by the time it hits here, it literally combusting. Now, by the time it actually hits the fin, It eats right through the fin, and then through his vital flesh, the surface layer, down into the tissue, and you can see all the blood vessels and everything. Look. You see that? It ate right through down to where the blood vessels coming down. These are veins. I mean arteries. The red is the arteries feeding the little blood vessels. You see that? Isn't that incredible? And then this is where the veins are sucking it back up to be returned back to clean it back up at the heart. This is anatomy nobody's ever seen before, I don't think. All right, anyway, that's this one. And then, there, and then of course, then we got Quetzalcoatl on the east coast of the United States. I'm just going to show you that one, and then we're going to, because there's more of them. I got them all over the place. But here's Quetzalcoatl right there. There's his head. All right, and there's his feathers that stick up off the top of his head. Quetzalcoatl had feathers. He was a feathered serpent, see? You see how green that is? Feathers grow the greenest green. They sell feather meal. They grind up feathers and sell it to make your plants green because it has so much nitrogen and it makes the chlorophyll work good. See up here? These are feathers too. Those are feathers. You see them? See how green that is? And they go all the way up the East Coast. They call them the Green Mountains way up in Canada almost. Well, I think it is Canada. See, this is all the same creature, all this, all, 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 all the way up. You see how big that thing is? The whole East Coast. 
And this might even be something to do with Florida. might have something to do with them. I don't know. I really don't know at this point. They're so huge that I can't find any legs and so forth to go with this. But here's his wing, it looks like to me. And the whole thing goes all the way up the East Coast. And there's his head. And look around. You see the different colors? Here's his beards. See the beards? The different colors means there's different tissue. This is his facial tissue, and it grows different plants. Then around it, which is the runoff of his body, fertilizes that stuff. And look at the, the pattern of the rivers that run around his nose. Look at that. Isn't that bizarre? This is between here and here. That barrier set up like this bizarre looking pattern. Look at that. And of course his throat is the same thing, the same bizarre looking pattern. And if you look carefully, you can see this is the actual width of his throat. And it goes up, runs all the way up, and you can follow it through if you pay attention. And don't forget, there's his beards. You see the two beards? And this here... Again, pay attention to the colors. You see the abrupt transition of color? This is outside his throat, and this is inside his throat. You see the color inside his throat versus the color outside his throat? And this is all going down his throat. It runs all the way up and then down, all the way down his stomach and up the East Coast. Now, dragons were very real, and these myths were extremely real, so it's time to take this seriously. I mean, it's seriously. Okay, so you've seen Typhon. This is Typhon. He's in a desert in, in Morocco, and he fits exactly what Apollodora said. And what's this one? This is just some skeleton-looking thing. What do we got here? We're talking about the horned serpent in mythologies in America, Native Americans. They were everywhere. So I, I'm, and then they show in here. What do they show? There's a dragon right there on a leash. <laughs> and they got giants over here, bigger than the elephants. And this is all real stuff. They knew. Look at the size of those guys over there. Well, check this out. This is an armadillo dragon, I guess they call it. I'm not sure what the, that might be. Boy, that looks just like the one I showed when I started off. These things just might be devolving and getting smaller. And they could, could very well be f part of the same thing. All right, so you remember I showed you the fish and the dragon in the desert? That's the f dragon attacking the fish. And they see these on the coins. These are ancient coins show the same thing, the dragon attacking the fish. And there's a, there, that's not just one. There's a bunch of different coins. All right, this is uh, a dragon attacking the sun. The giant red dragon. Whatever this is, dragon autopsy showing the skin. Somebody sent me this. Anyway, and I can't remember where I get a lot of this stuff. i, I got to be honest with you. They come and they go. Now, what this is about, I don't know. That looks kind of fake, but who the heck knows anymore? All right, that's, uh, I can't remember. That's maybe whales. Now, some of them love the dragon. Some of them hate him. What's this thing? I am born of a time before man when the world was raw. The wisdom of rocks and fire and earth and blood is in my veins, for now I live in a world of mists, beyond the reach of mortal man, but the time shall come when I shall rise again. Yikes. I wouldn't want one of those living around my area. 
come out of that cave and meet your doom, you miserable track, and you can't hide in there forever, you overgrown chameleon. <laughs> he said, <laughs> it's going to eat him. <laughs> oh, man. Here's another dragon coin. Here it is right here. Something. This actually has a fish, and it has... It looks like Zeus is, is Zeus's coils, I mean, um, Typhon's coils. What do we got here? Another dragon coin. That's the same one before. What do we got here? That's another one. Same thing. Dragon attacking a fish. They got them on maps. It's all over the place. This is from NASA. And these are colors on the back of the dragon, highlighted by the signature of the chemistry they give off. Look at that. That's that fluty looking thing on its back. And this is the this is the death or is it this one up here? No, it's this one down here. Coming down his dragon. This right here is his beard. So here you see it coming out of here? This is dragon death. That's the beards. They give off that toxin. And this is some more toxin probably being spewed out from down here. Look at all that colory stuff. Isn't that something? And that's from a NASA. This is a dragon eating a baby. Interesting. This is somebody faking a dragon. See, this is where... You know, you can never tell to be 100% sure. But you see them in the... This is just faked. So, sometimes you can get fooled. But it's not... You can't get fooled every time. This, I don't know what this was. But it's eating something. Oh, no, it's shooting out dragon balls of fire. This one here... Same thing. Well, what's this? You've got a jewel in her claw. Same looking faces. Uh, War in Heaven by Philippe Zekrovic. And this looks like, um, I guess it was Mike, uh, the angel Michael was doing battle with the the dragon and threw it to earth it doesn't and that's his lightsaber and they said that they cut Typhon's great it was attacked by I guess it was Zeus supposedly that's what the ancient texts say it was a, a fight between Typhon I believe and Zeus and Zeus who was also Jupiter, slashed him with his great and mighty sword, which is literally thunderbolts, and that's what slashed his throat. Now, is this Zeus? I don't know. That's what I mean. There's a lot of... It's, it's very, very hard to draw anything of any, cons you know, any absolute certainty. But I am looking at all the things I see. And I didn't draw all these pictures. These pictures exist everywhere. And that, this is exactly what I, that dragon was doing. This is very, very close to what that dragon would be like, only it was about a million times bigger, literally. That's a thousand miles long. All right, there's that one I showed coming up. That's just a little puppy compared to the stuff that's out there. What do we got here? This, I don't know if that's really real, but I think it might be. They all had this bump on their nose. And the neck and the horns coming up the back. That's, that looks, I think it was real. I'm not sure. That's what I mean. You can't be positive. This is the other one, the same thing again. And this is right up close and personal. You see his eye? You can actually see a pupil in there. These are not just accidental rocks. This is what gets me crazy. They say, oh, the guy's crazy. Look what he's seeing. Yeah, I know what I'm seeing. You see this? 
That right there is the eye. That's the carapace, which is the head. These are the teeth coming down. That is a gigantic dragon's head laying on a beach. I, I, I could be wrong. I think I could be wrong. But I don't think I am. There's just another shot of it. See the teeth coming out? These are the ones on the bottom coming up. These are the ones coming down. Red is always pretty much blood. And these teeth run all the way out to the end of his snout. Which they should. The carapace looks extremely accurately portrayed. The brow of the eye is quite prominent. I go a real. Now, what do we got here? Dragon's Hill. I don't know what this is on. Dinosaur Rock behind Devil's Gate, Peru. Notice the reptilian skull to the left and a sleeping dragon at its tail right. Uh, it's possible. I think these are sarcomeres, though, muscle tissues. Although, no, I don't know. That looks... That looks uh, pretty segmented. I don't know, it's hard to say without really seeing the whole thing from up above, sideways and everything else. What do we got here? These are the dragon... It's a plaque. They're showing... This one here just has horns. This one's got a crown. And they're eating people. I mean, was that a good thing? I wouldn't think so. Not if I was the guy that was getting eaten. Then they had these, um, I think this was called uh, Pollywaddle or something like that. That dragon off of Norway, I think it was. And a lot of these sea serpents were parasites that lived inside of the dragons. That when the dragons died, they had to go somewhere. They got washed into the seas and they started attacking the ships. And get, get, killing the, the sailors so they could eat. Here's the dragon and, uh, and the fish in the desert. So a lot of the sea serpents were just parasites living inside of these giant creatures. They were living in their blood vessels and in, on their tissues and everything else. They were fungus and parasites and little bugs and stuff. They call them extremophiles. All right, this is the legend of the hot springs. The Indians called it Solduk, a land of sparkling water. According to Indian legend, long ago a dragon lived in the Solduk Valley. One day he met another dragon from nearby Elua Valley and the two proceeded to fight over their land. During their fight they cleared the timber above the tree line and left bare areas that can still be seen today. The dragons also lost some of their skin, which is hanging in the trees and clinging to the rocks as moss and lichen. And that's what happens. Skin becomes moss and lichen. That's exactly true. The two fought for years and were an equal match. When neither dragon could win the fight, they crawled back to their caves and cried. The dragon's hot tears are the source of Selduk Springs. War is not a good thing. Wow, I forgot all about this. This is, um, I've got it down, it's called Dragon Tracing in Iran. I, dragon Iran Tracing, whatever that means. I don't see a dragon here, to be perfectly honest with you, but I do see an extreme similarity to the Mare Man in uh, Australia. If you put in Mare Man, you will see they will have very, very similar tracings. Now, who did this? I don't know. Did somebody come in here and make this, like, to be a maze or for a kid's playground or something? I have no clue. I don't know where this came from. I don't know where it is. But it looks just like the same sort of lines that you see at the Mare Man, almost identical. You know, you have to go back and watch it. I just did a video on this, but all I want to show you right now is the similarity of those lines. You see that? 
very very similar and this this is the structure of a giant creature that died right here and they outlined them there's no there's not a single way of getting in here to do this construction this was done i don't know how had to be done by gigantic creatures with some kind of a technology here that could make these kind of lines so perfectly absolutely flawless very very interesting all right, you see that? That is very, very similar lines. Now, I don't know exactly how big it is here, but it's, it, it appears to be we're kind of pretty high up off the surface. The same thing with Mare, man. It's very similar patterns, as far as I can determine. Now, check this out. This is in Thailand, where I was showing you that they have the Naga Caves. They apparently revered the dragon there. This is from the um, legendary temple Wat San Fran in Thailand. I'm going to tell you another thing. This construction will save that building in a typhoon or something. It wrapped around like that, the winds would work itself away from it. And this is like a big housing to hold that thing together. Not bad all in all. Plus, extremely cool to look at. Now, Let's see what else we got here. This is from ancient texts, the Leviathan and whatever this is. All right, this is the, the fish again being attacked by what looks like a lion. All right, these are dragon lizards, they call them. <laughs> That'll wake you up in the morning, wouldn't it? <laughs> what is this dragon metal? I don't know where this came from, but it's kind of cool. The Muslims had stories about them too. As a matter of fact, I got a real good one uh, uh, from Iran, I think it is. I'll show you that in a minute. But they all had the same stories, basically. That's this here, the dragon. This is a dragon from somewhere. I don't know where it was, but this is what it is colorized, I guess. Now, some of these things like this, you see that? You say, oh, I had a dragon. Well, I'm going to tell you something. That was probably a parasite inside of a creature. You want to know why? Watch this. You see this? Remember I told you they were t attacking them? ships and everything eating a crew this is virtually identical to what i just showed you <laughs> this is an extremophile and they are just some of the craziest craziest looking creatures look at this one and these were the things that they were saying were attacking ships all these crazy looking things and um and then they killed them all off and they were gone but they had to live somewhere after they were the little parasites inside these giant things I mean, it's just as strange as hell, but I'm sorry, that's, see, you saw that other thing. Let's go back to the other one a second. <laughs> Look, at, that's what, it, basically the same thing. And now it's like um, microscopic. Hold on, where was I? Look at this one. <laughs> I mean, they're just weirdest things you ever saw. All right, check this out. These are extremophiles, and they live in the most extreme conditions there are on Earth, which are in the guts of creatures, really. And, and, and then they, when those guts weren't producing enough food, they went to go find some other guts, and they, that was... Uh, human beings. These are the places they live in. These are, these are biological excretion zones and kidneys and, and, and 
hearts and lungs and pancreas and gallbladders and all the different things that create chemistry. And that's where they're living. These are extremophiles. Nothing else can live in these conditions. They are engineered to live in these conditions due to biology. Here's our baby eating buddy here. This, uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. That's a dragon skull, my friends. Very similar to the ones up the co that's up off the coast of Oregon. This is somebody killing a dragon. I, every single they all had them. They all talked about them. This is it in black and white. What do we got here? Dragon, dragon on a sword. I think we saw that before. Spitting out the dragon ball. Dragon tapestry. Wow, look at that. This must have been absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. They knew something was going on there. There's a dragon tattoo. That's pretty representative of reality, actually. These are ancient texts about dragons. From whence exhaled flames and fumes invaded the upper air. I don't know, it's kind of hard to read, but this is all, they knew that this stuff was real. Look at, he's got one eating, he's eating a guy right there, you see it? This is in Thailand. Now this time he's fighting the dragon. Thailand, I think they love the dragon. I don't know. It's a very confusing topic. But I can tell you what. They were here somewhere. Look at this one. That is a dragon's tooth, I believe. This tooth is still intact and this one's broken off. You see how it goes up here? That one would have been right there. It's broken right off. See how it comes up around here? The same thing coming up right around there. And that's the actually throw it right there. I believe. And that actually is up near um, this thing here. It's up somewhere up on his back. And they said he had a hundred heads. <laughs> I'm just reporting what it says. And this one here is, um, there was supposed to be a dragon that wrapped completely around the earth, and that's also possible. Look at that. This is not just accidental layering of this and that and erosion and all that. No, 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 no. This is biology, my friends. These are layers of tissue. What it was, I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. That is not just erosion of dirt and 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 layering that way it's just not that right 